We present Kenneth Williams, Derek Nimmo, Clement Freud and Moira Lister in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much and welcome once again to Just a Minute. And as you have just heard, we welcome for the first time on the program that lovely star of stage and screen, Moira Lister. <laughs> and I... I do hope that our three wicked male players of the game will be gallant. And let me remind you that I'm going to ask them all four at some time to speak on some unlikely subject for just a minute without hesitation, without repetition, and without deviating in any way at all. The others may challenge if they think they're guilty and gain points. If you don't know how we score, it may become obvious to you as we progress. Let us begin the show this week with Derek Nimmo. Derek, will you talk on the subject of hot dogs? For 60 seconds, starting now. Of course, I've always been a tremendous devotee of hot dogs. I've never really liked cold ones. I think whether it be an Alsatian or a poodle or a spaniel <laughs> or whatever you're cooking, they're so much nicer warm than served with a cold salad. Uh, Kenneth, you challenge why? Deviation. If he's discussing real dogs, he would never cook them. <laughs> We don't know what Derek does in his spare time, do we? <laughs> oh, dear. Um, hot dogs do mean a food, I quite agree, so he wouldn't cook them. Yes, that's quite right. So Kenneth Williams gains a point, as I agree with his challenge. He takes over the subject. 44 seconds left. Hot dogs, Kenneth, starting now. Hot dogs are revolting, but people do eat them, and especially under circumstances which could be described, I suppose, loosely as an emergency. Frequently they turn up when you're filming very late at night with hot coffee, and people do pour this filthy sauce all over them, and then they proceed to masticate them, and the whole process fills me with... <laughs> <laughs> Clement Freud, you've challenged. Hesitation. Yes, indeed. Yes, he's, he's, the word he was searching for eluded him. Thank goodness. I'm a repulsion. <laughs> so, Clement, you take over the subject. I give you a point because I agree with the challenge. There are 19 seconds left for hot dogs starting now. A hot dog is a meat substance invariably encased in skin and contains lights, lungs, blood vessels, gristle, tissue appendages, and not more than 15% of chicken, which was recent. Uh, Moira, you've challenged. Why? Deviation. I think this is absolutely untrue. No hot dog that I've ever tasted has contained any of those things. <laughs> I don't know. You are but... fooling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Never has there been a piece of chicken in any hot dog. I'm, I'm sure, Moira, that, that a lot of hot dogs could contain as much or more than those revolting things that Clement talk, talked about. What I must do here, Moira, is to give you a bonus point for a clever challenge, because it's possibly true what you say, but if we're not certain, I leave the subject with Clement Freud for five seconds. Hot dogs, Clement, starting now. Beef, veal, mutton, pork. Uh, Derek, why have you challenged? Repetition of a shopping list. <laughs> Uh, not of a... Sh yes, it could be a repetition of a shopping list. I'll give you a bonus point for cleverness, Derek. Leave the subject with uh, uh, Clement Freud. Two seconds left. Hot dogs starting now. And a certain amount of water. At the end of 60 seconds, the whistle goes, and whoever is speaking then gains an extra point. On this occasion, it was Clement Freud, and so he has a lead of one at the end of that round over all the others. You do see sometimes why I have difficulty, because I know that when I give a decision and there's only two seconds to go, somebody is going to get another point, and it's very, very difficult. Moira, will you begin the next round for us? Oh. Being a mother, can you talk about that for just 60 seconds, starting now? Being a mother <laughs> is a wonderful thing because it gives me a great advantage over my three opponents, because it is the one thing that none of them could be. <laughs> And I enjoy being a mother enormously. I have two children. I would have had several more, but the only fear that I had that any of the future children that I may have brought into the world would have turned out to be like my three opponents. I mean, uh, take my dear, beloved friend on my left. Uh, came up for why have you challenged? Deviation. Why? We're not opponents. <laughs> you certainly are. The You're buzzing you away like the mad. Game, Clement, you are most definitely an opponent. Maura Lister has a point, and she has 30 seconds for being a mother, starting now. And my friend, as I said before... Um, uh, Derek... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you 
Ruth. By her own lips, she's By her own admission, she's been just going to say lovely things about you all, but never mind. Well, there we're going to. We might. They might have a chance to hear them later, Moira. Derek, there are twenty-seven seconds left for being a mother. Starting now. So when I came back from Casablanca, I thought this is time to become a mother. And I must say, I'm enjoying it very much indeed. I think one of uh, the great... Kenneth, why well, do deviation, you obviously, isn't a mother, so he's telling lies. <laughs> oh, how do I judge on that? We, um... Oh, do you know whether he's telling lies or not, don't you? Well, all right, then. Of course. I don't think Derek Nemo is a mother. So I'll give it over to you, Kenneth. Okay, yeah. <laughs> have a point and you have 20 seconds for being a mother starting now being a mother is of course one of the great blessings of the feminine sex how else could our species procreate itself <laughs> we've all got to be procreate <laughs> Clement why have you challenged repetition of what procreation, procreation yes I agree six seconds left for you Clement the subject is being a mother starting now being a mother is something many people uh, Clement, Clement why have you challenged we've already had repetition yes you've all said it quite a lot so um, it's been used too often and uh, there are another point then to Kenneth Williams uh, four seconds left being a mother Kenneth starting now one of the great blessings and let us all Derek Nimmer why have oh, you yeah. a repetition that's how he started last one of the great blessings yes we've had the great blessing before <laughs> So there are three and a half seconds left, Derek, being a mother, starting now. For any woman, when she comes down, little baby looks at her eyes for the first time, say hello, mum. <laughs> Very interesting state. At the end of that round, Derek has taken the lead of one over all the others. That's created a silence, hasn't it? <laughs> Clement Freud, will you begin the next round? Curing a cold. 60 seconds, starting now. Curing a cold is a very difficult thing to do because many doctors say that this is impossible. Others say that what you must do is eat great quantities of food as opposed to a fever which can only be cured. Can you challenge? Hesitation. Yes, yes, his cold dried him up, didn't it? 44 seconds left for curing a cold starting now. The best way to go about this, and I speak with great authority, the best way to go. Good <laughs> challenge. Repetition. Repetition, yes, the best way to go about it. So, Clement, you take the subject back to 37 seconds curing a cold starting now. Make an infusion of mint, bay leaves, and. Kenneth, you've Hesitation. Challenged. Hesitation, yes, uh, Kenneth. They don't know much about curing colds, do they? <laughs> 33 seconds left, curing a cold, starting you can't now. Russian in Indulge future. yourself and lay there in the bed eating everything you can lay your hands on, including the fruit. That's very good for a clear out. Nothing better. <laughs> The matter is, these viruses are in the systems, and you've got to make your capillary action. Moira, why have you challenged? How many systems has he got? <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about collective systems, you see. He's talking viruses... about curing his own cold. We've yeah. got other systems in our body. The intestinal system is quite distinct from the blood system. <laughs> <laughs> but the, yes. the viruses uh, could be talked about <laughs> in systems generally. <laughs> She's trying to get in. I'm trying to get said, in. And it was Killing a very good attempt. And there's 70, 16 seconds for curing a cold, Kenneth, starting now. You must stimulate the phagocytes. It's been told us again and again, and yet this revise is rejected. Clement, why have you challenged? Repetition. What? Again and again. Clever, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Clement, you get another point. <laughs> and you take over the subject, and the 12 seconds, curing a cold, starting now. You get a towel and drape it over your head while you lean forward with a pot containing boiling water. Kenneth, why have you challenged? There's nothing to do with curing cold. It's inhalation. Yes, but inhalation is one of the most... No, that is the result of sinus congestion. It's nothing to do with the cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite... It's a very clever point. Oh, I've been in the ENT course. Too. I've done the ENT. <laughs> When he took to my nose, he said to me, add it off, he said. Oh, no, trichotomy, definitely trichotomy. Trichotomy. A repetition of trichotomy. Oh, but I'm explaining, you see. Yes. Uh, Kenneth, when you have a cold, you in invariably have nasal congestion, and people who have colds do inhale, so I think it's only fair to leave yeah. it with Clement and say there are five seconds left for curing a cold starting now. And inhale gently... <laughs> Uh, Derek, why have you challenged? The second time he's in here. I second time he's in here. Yes, yes. I haven't said anything. What did you say then, Clement? Well, I was only starting the process when this man, what his name? <laughs> 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 
interrupted me. I no. think you talked about inhaling before, and you did say inhale that time. Mm. Do you think Clement Freud has said inhale twice? If you do, audience, will you shout cheer? If you disagree, will you boo? Will you all do it now? <laughs> they all think you said it twice, Clement. Only the listeners can be the final judge, but Derek then gets a point, so there are four seconds for curing cold, Derek starting well, now. I do it much the same way as I do with a York ham, actually. I think it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> Kenneth, why are you charge? Deviation, we're not discussing York hams, we're discussing coals. I cure York hams, I can cure a coal. No, the one is the first no. is to medical, and the other, of course, is smoking and all that to do with cooking. It's nothing to do with anything I'm talking about. You're getting too difficult, Kenneth. He was said that he would cure his cold the same way as he would cure a York ham. He never explained. You might have chance later for deviation. I think, to be fair, I must leave it with Derek with one second left, curing no. a cold starting So now. I put my hand up and full of smoke. <laughs> At the end of that round, uh, Kenneth and Derek are equal in the lead. Just one point ahead of the other two. Kenneth, will you begin the next round? The things that some people get up to. A mild subject for you. And will you talk about it for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, the things that people get up to are manifold. One reads about these rags where undergraduates climb spires and place jerrys or poses, as they're sometimes called on the top, as a gesture, I suppose, of defiance, but they do say it can be construed as a publicity stunt. There are other people who sit on ledges and threaten to drop off at any minute, and the fire brigade arrive, and they spread these great nets below and all wait for them to carry out this threat. I think it's a waste of time and public money. Absolutely disgraceful. The other things that people get up to, of course, is mountaineering. They climb these mountains for no purpose. No purpose at all. They're on a building. They get to the top. Moralista, you've challenged why? Repetition of no purpose. A repetition of purpose. So she gains a point and she takes over the subject of things some people get up to starting now. Like Derek Nimmo wearing my frilly knickers. <laughs> Clement, why have you challenged? Hesitation. Clement has a point there, and there are 13 seconds left for some people's frilly knickers that they... I mean, I'm so sorry. They, <laughs> some things people get up to, Clement, starting now. Plymouth Argyle football team recently got up to Carlisle in order to... Uh, uh, Derek, why have you challenged? I withdraw it. <laughs> I thought he said Argyle, but he said Carlisle twice, not Argyle, Argyle, or Carlisle, Carlisle. <laughs> and so it was a total, totally wrong challenge, and I do apologise to Mr. Freud and his wife if she happens to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely charming and beautifully done, but we've got to be fair in this game, Derek, and you came in because you thought you had a clever challenge there, and you didn't, so I have to give a point to I'm Clement not Freud. Right. On I'm that. not disputing. Give him a point. I'm happy for him to have a point. <laughs> oh, the gallantry of the mouse. So little. <laughs> So lacking on most occasions. Um, eight seconds for things some people get up to, Clement, starting now. And on the journey north, the team stopped at Crewe and got out and had... Uh, Kenneth, why have you chance? This isn't about getting up to anything. This is about train travelling. <laughs> yes, that's quite true. Can you justify it, Clement, very rapidly? No, you can't. Cle Kenneth has a point. <laughs> there are four seconds for things some people get up to, Kenneth, starting now. Balloons and helicopters and, of course, Boeing. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, there is one person who has a lead of one over all the rest. It is Kenneth Williams. Oh, no! <laughs> Derek, will you begin the next round? A nice, delightful subject. Taking a Turkish bath. Will you talk on that subject for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, of course, it's terribly difficult to take a Turkish bath, principally because of the weight involved. <laughs> now, I know of one in German Street, which I think is suitable for a quick theft. The way I would go about it, actually, is to come along with a very high movable crane and a large Pantechnican van. I would suspend the crane over the top of the Turkish bath, possibly on Christmas Day, when there'd be few people inside, and that would keep the contents down. And uh, then... Maura, why to challenge? Deviation. It's entirely impossible to lift a Turkish bath because it's built in. Quite right, Maura. You have a point, and there are 35 seconds for taking a Turkish bath starting now. Well, I just lie in it for hours on end. I feel the sweat pouring off my brow. Uh, Kenneth, why have you challenged? Repetition, hours on end. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, Kenneth, I give you one point for cleverness, and I keep the subject with Moira Lister. 31 seconds, Moira, for taking a Turkish bath starting now. And as each drop of sweat pours from me, I 
Visual. <laughs> Clement, why have you challenged? Hesitation. Hesitation, oh. that's more. <laughs> so, Clement has another point, and there are 23 seconds for taking a Turkish bath, Clement, starting now. There tend in Turkish baths to be three rooms of differing temperatures, and one progresses from one to the next, and in the end, when you are in the hottest room of all, you lie with towels draped around you, and you have to be very careful not to touch the wood, which becomes increasingly hot as you stay there, and almost unbearable to the human skin. Attendance... Uh, Derek, why have you challenged? Well, deviation, he hasn't got human skin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do I give you a bonus point for rudery, or what? <laughs> I think it is... I don't pretty... mind what you do. It was worth saying, wasn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. What I'll do yeah. is I won't score any points because <laughs> it was a good joke and uh, say that Clement Freud has four seconds to continue with taking a Turkish bath starting now. There are scales all over so that you can weigh yourself in case... <laughs> Well, as Clemmer was speaking, when the whistle went, he gets another point, and it means that he's now in the lead alongside <laughs> Kenneth Williams at the end of that round. <laughs> Moira Lister, will you begin the next round for us? What can be crammed into a minute? What an apt subject for this show. Will you try and talk on that subject for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, my last moment has come. I was in a tent in the jungle, and there were animals all around me, and I woke up, and I saw this tremendous skin next to my face, a green, slimy, ghastly, breathing animal was right next to me. And I thought, this is the moment at the end of all now. What am I going to do? If I jump from this bed at this moment, it is this enormous snake which is going to bite me and put its fangs into me. So what could I do? I lay there, the sweat pouring from my brow. And I thought, if I jump at this second little turn, and that'll be the end of me. So I lay there, panting, thinking of all the terrible things that I'd done. Doing a wife challenge. Repetition of panting. As she's repeated nearly everything else, I'm not going to award you one. <laughs> so Maura has another point and she carries on with her panting for another 35, 25 seconds, starting now. And I thought of all the terrible things that I'd done to everybody. I thought of all the... A Derek Lim of Wife, you chat. Repetition of terrible things. I know. <laughs> I've already established she's already repeated other things, so she can go on repeating. I've got 23 <laughs> seconds for Maura to continue. All the laughs that I had pinched from Derek Nimmo and the play that we'd done together. All the times that I'd upstaged him. All the times that I'd worked with Kenneth Williams and had let him take the laugh. Uh, Kenneth, why do you chat? This has nothing to do with things you can cram into a minute. It's becoming a sort of public confession. <laughs> <laughs> But she is cramming everything into this particular minute, exactly. so Moira Lister has another point, and there are 15 seconds for what can be crammed into a minute, Moira, starting now. And as I looked at that animal next to me, I thought, now, this is the end. The end has come. I must jump from this bed. Uh, clearing the why have you challenged? And Repetition the of a pen. challenge that won't be accepted. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I haven't been repetition. able to award it to you before, I think on this particular occasion she's cramming everything into a minute, including repetition, deviation, and hesitation. <laughs> and I've established that, so she must keep going for another ten seconds for what could be crammed into a minute starting now. So I jumped out of the bed and I looked round. What I see? Nothing but enormous great bullfrog. Wasn't a snake at all. And I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> By some rather devious means, I managed to establish that in that particular subject, what can be crammed into a minute, you could cram in hesitation, repetition, and deviation. <laughs> and Moira Lister was extremely clever. She crammed them in many, many times. <laughs> and she is to be congratulated. Now, she spoke when the whistle went, she gets another point. <laughs> and she oh, is actually in third place now, just, behind, just ahead of Derek, but oh. Clement and Kenneth are still in the lead. Uh, Clement, will you begin the next round? The subject is frogs, 60 seconds, oh. starting now. These are possibly the most edible green things that hop about in fields, known in the French culinary language as grenouille. The leg is eaten more commonly than the rest of the body, and ideally this is taken off the outer... Uh, Kenneth, why have you Hesitation. Hesitation, yes. You didn't quite know how to get it off, did you? <laughs> so... There are 43 seconds left for frogs, Kenneth, starting now. Moreover, what Clement Freud said is strictly inaccurate because he said you could eat a leg. If that is true, we obviously have a limping uh, frog Mora, somewhere. You... And that was possibly you... by the RSPCA. Why have you challenged, Mora? Tripping over his words. No, no, I thought you were going to say deviation. Kenneth, you have another point. There are 25 seconds left for frogs, starting now. Then, of course, there are those you get in your throat 
as well as those that you stick a sword through. Those are used quite a lot in costume plays, and they say, oh, where is my referring to it, you see, which I'm not going to do now, otherwise they'll get me on the challenge. And then there's another kind of frog again. It's a sort of nickname they give to Frenchmen. People do say... Well, as Kenneth was speaking, when the whistle went, he gains yet another point and gives him a very definite lead over the, all the three others at the end of that round. And, Kenneth, it's your turn to begin the next round, and the subject <laughs> that Ian Messer has thought up happens to be rather apt at this moment. It's called being sent up. <laughs> so, will you try and talk on that subject for 60 seconds, starting now? This has happened to me quite a lot, and <laughs> there are... Ho Moira, why have you Hesitation. challenged? Hesitation. Do you think it was a hesitation, listeners? If you agree, will you cheer? If you disagree, will you yeah. boo? And will you all do it together now? Yeah. Moira Lister, they agree with you. You oh. have a point, and there are 55 seconds for being sent up, Moira, starting now. I have absolutely no idea what it means by being sent up, but I shall try to defend the subject. I suppose this happens to actors as Kenneth Williams when he's doing something a little peculiar on a stage or in a television show, and so the audience therefore say, let us do just what we've said to Kenneth Williams by... Uh, Clement, why do you challenge? Reputation of Kenneth Williams. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've had a bit too much of Kenneth Williams at this particular point. So, uh, uh, as an actor of repetition, Clement, you have another point. 38 seconds left for being sent up, Clement, starting now. This means, quite literally, to be put into a container and to be lifted to some higher floor. One can be sent up in a lift, in a packing case, or in a paternoster, which is a conveyor belt containing cubicles into which one gets to rise to a higher level than the one from which one came. In the theatre... Uh, Derek, you've challenged. Hesitation. Hesitation, I quite agree, Derek. There are 18 seconds for being sent up starting now. See, when I look at him across the table, I shout, Oh, sucks to you! Go on, clear off in your great big softy! And that's what's being called being sent up, and he knows that people shout him <laughs> all the time! <laughs> Clement, why have you challenged? Hesitation. Hesitation, you've got him in exactly the same challenge. You have the subject back. Nine seconds, oh, being God. sent up, starting now. <laughs> <laughs> So, having passed that much time without anyone telling me at all, I thought I would say, go ahead, my men. Uh, I, that was the most interesting silence we've ever had on just a minute. Nobody challenged. There were actually eight seconds went by, <laughs> nobody said anything, and nobody challenged. But anyway, Clement got a point at the end of that round because he was speaking. He's now in second place, but Kenneth is very definitely still in the lead. <laughs> Moira Lister, will you begin the next round? And it's a very apt one for someone who's been the first time in the programme, but I might tell you, Moira, you are in a very commanding third place. You're doing jolly well for the first time, and this subject is getting a break. Would you talk on that subject for 60 seconds, starting now? The first break I got was actually in my right arm. I used to play with my two elder sisters, who used to play a game of witchy, and I was the good fairy. They used to tie a rope round me and throw me over the balcony of a two-storey house that we used to live in as a great game. But this particular day that we were playing it, the telephone actually rang in the middle of the game, and so they ran... Okay, it's quite a the game has been out. mentioned before. The game has been mentioned, alas. So there are 38 seconds for getting a break, Kenneth, starting now. Well, getting a break, I presume, means an opportunity which, when you're given it, you have the chance to do something which ordinarily would never have presented itself to you. <laughs> and so, consequently, you say thereafter, Oh, what a wonderful period that was in my life! That was my big moment! And when I went out there onto that stage, look at the reaction to me! They got up in their seats and they knocked on my door and they made me a very nice <laughs> Well, what an apt moment to say that is the end of just a minute because uh -huh. Kenneth Williams was not only getting a break, he was just demonstrating how to get a break. He took his break in both hands. He not only had a lead before, he finished up with a commanding lead and he's undoubtedly the winner this week of Just a Minute. <laughs> uh, 
only one or two points separated Moira Lister, Clement Freud and Derek Nimmer, who were second, third and fourth respectively. And that, I'm afraid, is the end of just a minute. And from all of us here, goodbye. Goodbye. The chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The programme was devised by Ian Messiter and produced by David Hatch. <laughs> <laughs>